It is as Russ. Yeah, I'm back out on the road again. So what am I riding today? <laughs> you're gonna have to guess. Yeah, you're gonna have to guess again. Testing out a bike. Yeah, so I can't tell you. We haven't done the official release of the bike yet. <laughs> You can take your best guess. I won't confirm or deny anything. <laughs> but as you know, I typically will try out the bikes first before I start formulating anything about um, about the uh, review itself. I want to get an idea how it rides, how it does, how it performs. And then after all that, I'll put together what I think I will be talking about on the review. So I don't know how much of the bike you can see. I am leaning forward a bit on the bike. It's kind of an aggressive bike. It's been kind of designed to do that. But I think in time, I will have to change out the uh, handlebar stem. I'm not one that likes leaning forward on a bike that much. Um, this one kind of requires you to do it. I understand why they have it like this. I mean, there is no fenders on this bike, as you might notice. It's just a bare tire there. So it kind of gives you an idea of the type of bike it might be. But, um... Stop here for a second, make sure this guy crosses, or is he's gonna allow me to cross, okay. He's allowing me to cross. So uh, the display screen seems to be a little difficult to read if you have polarized sunglasses on, which I do. Uh, if you take a look at the battery, I'm down to like 39% of battery power, so I'm not gonna go too far today. for fear of uh, not making it back, right? So we'll just kind of hang around this general area. It does have hydraulic brakes, which is nice. Makes life a lot easier. <laughs> So what have I been doing? Well, <laughs> yesterday I did uh, did a review, which won't come out until later um, in July. It'll come out in July, and then I did a uh, a review the day before that, <laughs> which you guys have already seen. That's the Ace Volt review. Yeah, that's a power station. Yeah, that, that was the thing that was left at my doorstep. It was actually the solar panels. Remember I mentioned once before, I said something's been left by my door. Anyone can steal it. <laughs> it's not really bike uh, related, but it could be. <laughs> that's what I was talking about. Yeah, we could use the, uh, the Ace Volt to help charge up our batteries remotely if we don't have power source uh, like AC power to plug into. And of course you can use it for other things too. I mean, you can use it for uh, battery backup. You could use it to charge. Yeah, well, you could use it to charge anything. It's, you can plug anything at the AC power cord, you can plug into there. Anything with USB could be charged and plugged into there. So I'm glad to have it. I know it's an expensive item. Not everyone can afford to get it. So uh, it's been one of the little perks of uh, being a YouTuber, I would say. And I only accepted it because I, I could see the benefit of using that for either camping or for something remotely uh, um, where you're using your, your uh, bike somewhere remotely and you can't get to AC power. Like for instance, uh, when uh, Mrs. Wright and I went out to, um, to Wisconsin, you know, we weren't allowed to bring our bikes into the, the hotel, remember that? but they did allow us to charge our batteries in the hotel room. I think they really didn't understand um, 
about the potential battery fires <laughs> that people I mean if, if anything if, if if I would have thought that they were gonna ban us from anything they would have said okay you can bring your bikes in but you can't bring your batteries in right I, I would have thought that's what they would have said but I don't think they understood about this whole thing with e-bikes and um, potential issues with fire so uh, we charged up inside the room because they said it was okay to do it and you know we've never had a problem with the charging issues anyways I always monitor everything but um, you know there's always that potential right but think about this way if, if you went someplace uh, the next time we go someplace okay uh, the next time we go someplace they may say um, you know you can't bring your bikes in and you can't charge it here either well where am I gonna charge it then well if I had that portable power source with me I could uh, I could leave it in the car and charge it if I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, and there'd be enough power to, to, to charge up several of my uh, e-bike batteries. I'd probably do the whole trip. Charge all the e-bike batteries with that thing because it's, it's, it's so big. So in that sense, if we ever go anywhere, I might be bringing that along with me. Yeah. Just in case they tell you you can't... Uh, can't bring your bike or your batteries in here okay no problem <laughs> no problem I can take care of it so that's that's the reason why I said yes to that product I said it's it's good for that I saw it as a potential uh, thing for me um, you know in terms of um, you know like I like I said if, if your power ever went out and you had to run your sump pump we do have a battery backup on our sump pump yeah uh, but if that battery goes out, then I'm out of luck, right? Not if I have another backup battery. <laughs> so I, I saw that immediately as a potential usage for that product. So, And yeah, you could charge it up with a solar panel. It doesn't take that long. What did I say that thing takes? Um, was it five, six hours, something like that? I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I have such a short memory. So you could charge it up by solar and then uh, use it so yeah it's quite flexible all right so back to this bike I can't tell you a whole lot about it because I haven't released the video review yet of it it is a new model I don't even think they've officially uh, released it yet but I'm not gonna mention who it's from or what it is I won't confirm or deny anything <laughs> but I do need to test it So I've been running it down. I want to see how it performs when the battery runs out. I do do this to certain bikes. I don't do it for every bike I, where I run it down to, to like nothing. So obviously I'm not pedaling. <laughs> I'm going to throttle this thing to get it down there. Move it down there faster that way, you know. Rides well though, I'll say that. But it's a forward leaning uh, bike. You do. You do lean forward on it. It's, it's more aggressive that way, but I'm going I'm to change out this stem. I won't do it until after the review, but I, I I'll probably change it out. I, I prefer to ride more upright. It's just me, but I, I don't think I'm alone. I think a lot of people do. You know, there was a time when people said, no, you got to be more aerodynamic. You don't want to, you don't want to be sitting upright. You got to lean in, you know, cut that wind. Uh, I don't think that's really that necessary for e-bikes. Well, it, all right, you get better, better mileage if you do that. But do we really care that much? <laughs> I don't think we really care that much if you're an e-bike rider. You, if you can't get it, the first thing you'll say is, give me a bigger battery. <laughs> no, I, I prefer to be more upright when I'm riding. I think as we get older, we kind of feel that too. We, we really don't want to be leaning over on a bike and doing things. Okay, some people do, but I don't. I never did. I, I never really enjoyed leaning forward because your arms tire out. I, I don't want to be tired out. I want to, I want to enjoy the ride. And by the way, between all these review things that we have to do um, for part of the channel, um, I, I like doing it but I really enjoy riding the bike more so. I mean, isn't that the whole reason why we even have the e-bikes? <laughs> yeah, we should be riding the bike. It's 
why there's so many bikes. There's so many bikes, and one of the reasons why I haven't re, re, you know refused um, or haven't tried to re, re, uh, to sell off the bikes after I've done the reviews. I do refuse a bunch of bikes, though. I think we're up to like 64 bikes uh, that I've turned down so far. Yeah, I, I don't take everything. There's no reason for, first off, where would you put all that stuff? You could buy it and you could sell it, or, or review it and then sell it, right? But even then, that's not that easy to do, you know, to sell, sell something off. You gotta list it, or you're gonna have to tell your subscribers to come get it and all that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're gonna have to sell off some bikes. We already know that. Still debating which bikes are actually gonna be ended up sold. Some of them we already know, like the Velatric uh, Thunder One. I will sell that. So if anyone wants the Thunder One, contact me. I'll give you a good price on it. <laughs> That's the class one bike. Yeah, I think it's like 36 pounds. It's, it's, it's almost like a road bike, right? Um, with a lot of bells and whistles on it. I will sell that one off. Because I can't ride it very well myself because of my bad leg and knee. But if you're interested in Torque Sensor Class 1, um, lightweight bike, that would be the one to do. That one will go. The Rad Rover is always still available for anyone who's interested in that. I'll give you a real good price on that one if you're interested in Rad Rover 5. It has the 52 volt, 20 amp hour unit pack power battery on it. If you want that one, I, I would be willing to sell that one off. I've been debating about the KBO um, cargo bike as well, the Ranger. That was the one with the spokes that had to be adjusted. Well, it's been adjusted. And um, I haven't really ridden that bike much since, since getting it back. So I'll give you a deal on that if you want that. A cargo bike. <laughs> what else should we sell? <laughs> what else can we get rid of? Um, now we'll start with those three. If you're interested in any of those three bikes, contact me. You will have to pick it up. I am in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Okay, You have to have a way to uh, transport it. Uh, the bikes are fairly big, so if you don't have something like a pickup truck or an SUV will not fit these. Okay, you cannot put them in there. They're too big. Uh, you will need either a bicycle rack, a van, <laughs> ride it all the way home, <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you're going to do. Sorry about that, I had an itch. <laughs> So yeah, those bikes will be going. All right, what are we down to now? 7%, I had to take my sunglasses off to see this. Now you might be wondering, why are you riding it so far with so little battery left? Yeah, because I have a second battery. <laughs> I got a second. This is why you want a second battery. <laughs> In case things like that happen, you know, if you uh, if you totally run out of a uh, battery, what are you going to do then, right? If you're too far away from places, so anyway, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> Want to see how it reacts? All right, how's it riding so far? Well, pretty good. <laughs> kind of like it. <laughs> I mean, I'm leaning forward. That part I don't like so much, but yeah, I'm getting used to it. Like I said, I understand why it's designed this way. You know, if you're if you're gonna take something off road, you you might want to be more leaning forward, I guess. You know, if you're doing aggressive riding or something, I'm not doing that. I'm just kind of riding around the streets here. Zero. 
We're at zero and we're still going. Yep, it says zero. <laughs> Says zero, we're still going. All right, we got to slow down here. We got some kids. Good morning. All right. Zero and we're still going. How are we able to keep going? Well, that's the secret of this bike. That is the secret of this bike. Thing is you gotta test all this stuff out. I'll review all that stuff to you later once we do the review of the bike. All right, let's make our turn here. I will say this, the forward leaning. <laughs> My arms are going to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I feel the tingling in my arms. Yeah, because you're applying pressure. You're, you're leaning forward, right? You're applying pressure. And that, that just puts your arm to sleep. All right, well. I think the biggest problem I have right now with the bike is I can't see the display screen very well. Not with my polarized sunglasses on. I have prescription sunglasses. I don't, I don't wear clip-ons. <laughs> clip-ons, clip-ons for, uh, for your sunglasses. Yeah, I used to do that when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we couldn't afford uh, prescription sunglasses. <laughs> No way. Best you get is some type of clip-on that you bought at uh, at the drugstore or something. Clip it onto your onto, onto your regular glasses. Feel it being a little more sluggish at this point. Because this bike should do 28 miles per hour. I am maxing out. I'm only doing 16 at this point. Alright, I think we better call it a day. <laughs> I better see if I can start heading back, um, switch out the batteries and head back or something. But uh, yeah, this is what happens typically with bikes uh, when you get towards the end of its ride uh, ability. You know, the, the battery, uh, the bike will start getting sluggish and things. So anyway, appreciate you guys following along. <laughs> something for me to do as I'm uh, testing these things out. I can at least talk to you guys. If you like the video go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button we have passed our 15,000 mark appreciate it thank you so much i'll talk to you guys next time